Welcome to part two where we're turning a grungy crawl space into an epic storage center. If you're just tuning in and you want to see the entire process, click the playlist in the top right corner and that will take you to the very beginning of the show. So right now we're just wiping down a lot of the support beams, 2x4s, backing up spider webs and dust. It's very disgusting down here. And uh, the in-house vacuum, the hose connection for it was disconnected. So who knows how long they were actually just, whenever the in-house vacuum was going, it was just blowing all that dust and pollen and everything right into the crawl space here. And with the kitty litter and pet urine and everything down here, the, the concerning part is I found a lot of toys down here. So I'm hoping the kids weren't actually playing in this from the previous owner. Um, if, I'm hoping that the cats were dragging it down. But that was the original light fixture you saw me ripping off. Uh, it was just, I think there was two different spots where little 60 watt bulbs were screwed in. Ironically, I think all these lights um, are roughly six watts each. So 10 of them could replace one of those bulbs and still consume the same amount of electricity. Uh, this paint that you're seeing me paint on, it's not just paint. I just showed you what it was. Um, I'll put a link in the description. It's kind of like a mold moisture lock. It really don't have an issue with mold up in this area, um, but I, I'm just trying to take every safety precaution I can. Uh, so I laid that on really thick and it's more like slime than paint. It's definitely a different texture. So then next we rip up these very rough laid out tarps that they have down here. Basically they're the thickness of a garbage bag. And uh, you see there's a lot of gravel here. So I wanted to make it a place where I can walk a lot and the new tarps I put on it, I didn't want walking to be rubbing against the rocks, wearing them prematurely. So what I'm doing is that's just water in the can, just spraying it down, making it a little bit moist so that way it doesn't stir up a bunch of dust. I do have that vent going that I showed you in the earlier videos uh, just to help keep the air clean. Wearing a mask anyways, but just spray as I go, making it just wet enough to keep the dust from coming up as best as I can. And that was a nightmare, uh, filling up five gallon buckets with gravel and carrying it out of the house. And my first thought was get all the gravel out, make it just dirt, and that was the correct action. Then I started getting lazy or exhausted from having to carry the rocks out, and I had a thought later on that I'll just get bags of sand and, and fill in the gaps, and then it'll be a smooth surface. It helps a little bit, but the best solution was just to rake all the rocks out, and I should have just done that through the entire floor. Uh, but near the end, you can see some of the rocks don't get taken out. So once I get uh, the bulk of the rocks out and rake it fairly smooth, you can see that brown roll right there that I'm cutting open. That is the tarp. Uh, the thickest tarp that I saw at like Home Depot or Lowe's was like six mil. This stuff is 20 mil, um, quite stronger. Is that the right term? I don't know. It's much stronger than you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, the only downside is uh, the measurements. I forgot what the exact was, um, but it, it wasn't the same measurement in every roll. So if it would, was the right measurement, I would have had to cut a custom roll uh, to fit the final piece. Um, but it's really thick and it is also fiber reinforced. Uh, so really good stuff. And uh, I can't find the link for it to the exact one that I bought is no longer available on Amazon, probably because they got removed because they kept being inconsistent with sizes. And that's super annoying, but when the brick and mortar stores can only offer you like six mil, it's worth rolling the dice and potentially having to buy one extra roll to get really good thick stuff. Now this tape that you see me putting on, I do put uh, like some sort of Gorilla Glue uh, caulking underneath it. And then I also add the tape. That tape is, designed to connect the type of tarps that you use for the flooring and it's really good on connecting the tarps however it's terrible at connecting to brick so uh, eventually i end up uh, removing that tape later on and i'll actually put down some heavy duty heavy duty gorilla tape and also the the caulking did a really good job once it hardened and dried um, so it's just two different layers of protection to try to help make sure that's sealed really well and here's another angle. You can see me really putting on that Gorilla Glue goop stuff. And then I put a bunch of paint buckets down just to put some added weight on it, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. That's what you're seeing on the other sides around it. 
Okay, and now we go on with the second roll, rolling it out, and you can see that little gap at the end. Uh, some of them are long enough that it, you can see it covers both sides. It goes from one end all the way to the other, and they're supposed to all be the same length tarp, so that I'm assuming that was probably part of the reason why they got kicked off of uh, Amazon. Uh, so that's unfortunate, but like I said, it's really thick stuff. You can kind of see, like, in the glare, you can see, like, little textile texture that's like the fibers that are like embedded in it it's so thick uh, even though it's not the right size i would buy it again it's it's really good so now we get to these four by four posts and they don't have them anchored to the, yeah, that's what i use they don't have them anchored to the main support beam for the whole house they're just like wedged in there and they got these like shims hammered into place very sketchy not bolted into the ground just resting there um, so I had to get those up, and I got brackets uh, to anchor it to the support beam and to the floor. And instead of putting a 4x4 four four in there, I actually upgraded to a 6x6 six six just to give it a little bit more of a bite. And I wanted the least amount of holes possible in the tarp also. I wanted as continuous of a piece. So once it's jacked up, I push it all under, and then I'm going to pivot a little spot, figure out where I want the brace to go underneath. There was concrete in that spot. So I'm actually gonna drill into the concrete uh, to anchor uh, the support post piece, whatever it's called in here. So at least they did it right by putting concrete in there. I didn't put the concrete in there, um, but they didn't actually have braces. So sorry, that was a four by six, not six by six. Um, but yeah, so got the brackets into place and I am loving how that thing looks, looks so good. And then, so this was a unconditioned crawl space. So they had venting and it wasn't enough venting to be unconditioned, so it was kind of the worst of both options. So the first time I'm trying wood putty, I'm just sealing in all the holes, trying to make it airtight. I forget what I did on the other side. I think I might have used spray foam or something. But just sealing it off so that way that no exterior air can actually get into the crawl space, and that's how we get it to become conditioned. Man, that looks so much better than it did originally. Like, so once this project is done, it's gonna be clean enough down here that like if you wanted to, you could throw a bed down here and consider this like a guest room for your least favorite friend probably. So here we go, we're gonna slowly jack up the main support again. See, look at that. It's just like, oh, we cut the board too short. Let's just shove a shim in there. That's good to go. Yeah, should we screw it in place so it doesn't fall or anything? Nah, it's fine. Oh yeah, it's splitting too. No, it's fine. So obviously uh, we're getting rid of that ridiculous post. And same thing, you can see, so this is where I cheated out on the rocks. I did take a lot of them out, but some of them ended up staying anyways. And my idea was essentially I put them in areas where it's not gonna get a lot of foot traffic, so it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, so we're missing it, now we get smoothed out, get the new post in there, make sure it's nice and level, then slowly lower the house back onto it. And that looks pretty darn good. Then we go back with the uh, anti-mold goo. And even though I end up leaving some rocks, most of the rocks you see there, I'm gonna end up taking out in buckets. And that took a lot of work. Well, that's the end of this portion of converting the crawl space into an epic storage space. If you're enjoying this and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click the subscribe button so you don't miss the final part, hopefully, on building this epic crawl space. This is a fun journey and I'm glad to be sharing it with you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.